Hey guys, Derek here from Back to Reality. And this will just be a short impromptu video today because over the past month or so, a number of you have been asking for an update about our asparagus plants. Now, if you missed our previous videos about that experiment, as usual, I'll place some links in the description. But essentially, back in 2019, we decided to try companion planting asparagus and strawberry crowns all in a Ruth Stout style deep malt garden bed. But I called it an experiment because we also decided to forego all the usual advice like digging a deep trench and filling it with compost and manure and a bunch of other amendments, and instead simply buried each of our crowns in a shallow hole and then covered the soil with a thick layer of hay as mulch. And our hope was that, like Ruth Stout, we'd have success simply by allowing nature to take its course. And so far, every spring since then, we've been greeted by an ever-increasing number of larger and larger asparagus spears. And this usually starts sometime in May, which means I usually start some sometime around mid-April, checking on each of these plants for any signs of life. But so far this year, there hasn't been any. That is, until today. Come check it out. Oh, but actually, before we look at the asparagus, let's take a really quick peek at the strawberries. Because, as you may recall, the crowns we initially planted that first year never actually grew. Unfortunately, I have a feeling the plants were already dead when we bought them. So instead, we replaced them during the second year, but this time with transplants. And we planted them all in a single row on one side of the bed, with the goal of having them eventually spread out to fill in the other side as well. So, for example, this is one of the transplants, and... As you can see, it has now sent out these stolons and established a bunch of these daughter plants. And so we're slowly trying to train these larger plants that we planted from transplant to cover this entire bed all around our asparagus. Obviously these plants don't look like much this early in the season, but throughout the summer they tend to fill out pretty well. And they're ever-bearing strawberries, meaning that they don't produce a ton of fruit all at once, but rather a trickle of fruit during pretty much the entire growing season. In fact, this bed has quickly become a real highlight for me because every time we visit the garden, we get to enjoy a good handful of sweet, juicy strawberries while tending to whatever chores we had planned. Honestly, it's just a really nice treat. Oh, and here are some more of the daughter plants that have actually made their way out of the bed and into the path. So in this case, each of these can be dug up and transplanted back into the bed to keep the whole process going. But let's get back to the real reason we're here and have a look at the asparagus. So we planted our asparagus crowns all in a single row down the center of the bed with the hope that they would eventually fill in the foot and a half spacing in between. But as you can see from the remnants of last year's plants that we chopped and dropped at the end of last season, so far they're doing a great job of creating larger clumps, but not really spreading out much yet. So we may need to add some more crowns into the gaps, or perhaps we'll just give them some more time to do their own thing. But either way, so far this spring, I hadn't noticed any new shoots appearing from any of these plants, until today when I found this little guy. And again, this doesn't look like much at the moment, but the fact that a new spear is now poking through the surface means that our root system survived another winter, and that the plants can once again start producing carbohydrates through photosynthesis, which will in turn help them build even larger root systems for next year. So at this point it's really not that surprising to see the asparagus coming up because it has every year since we planted it, but it is still very exciting to see it coming up, especially because this should be the first year where we actually get to taste some. At this point the roots should have established themselves well enough that if we steal a few spears it won't have any detrimental effects. And then and maybe next year we can actually start getting a proper harvest. Oh, and there is one other thing that I'd like to mention before we go. If you've seen our previous videos, you may recall that one of the reasons why we felt so confident with this natural approach in the garden is because we actually have wild asparagus growing completely on its own back here in the forest. In fact, that's actually one of the ways that I gauge whether or not our asparagus is coming up on time, because usually the forest asparagus comes up the exact same day as the garden asparagus asparagus. So why don't we take a quick walk and see how it's doing. So right over here is a small patch that's been remarkably consistent over the past few years. As you can see, these are some of the dried out ferns from last season, and the leaves are already cleared out from the base because I've been checking on these periodically for the past week or two. But interestingly, I'm still not seeing any new shoots. 
beautiful. That was unexpected because like I said, the forest asparagus always comes up at exactly the same time as the garden asparagus. But for some reason, the garden asparagus is actually coming up quicker this year, or at least that one plant is. So that's exciting. Now I imagine the wild asparagus will start sending up spears any day now, and our domesticated asparagus will likely start sending up quite a few more as well. So we'll obviously keep an eye out for that. But in the meantime, thanks so much for watching. And we'll see you soon.